back 1,355 episodes and find out how World of Sport actually began. I mean, what did Ron Casey do? What did Uncle Doug do? Did they sit down and have a chat and say, hey, look, I think a sports show could be an idea. Well, the man that can tell us is with us, and I'm sure we'll all welcome him back, Ron Casey. Good on you. What did you do, Ron? I mean, how did it, well, actually, uh, the, 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 the beginning of World of Sport, as you probably know, is it was on Saturday morning. But the reason for it being on Saturday morning is not generally known. The marketing guy at, uh, at Westinghouse, who were uh, retailers of television sets back in 1956 and 57, uh, really wanted to get some pictures on a television screen on a Saturday morning because most of the decisions about buying a television set were being made on Saturday morning right. by the family. Yep. And they go to the shop to buy a television set and there was nothing on. So they decided for 13 weeks they put a sports program on. So for 13 weeks on Saturday morning for two hours there was a sports program and I'm trying to think of some of the people who were in it. Uh, I know Jack Ayling was in it, uh, Jeff Brook was in it as the, as the angling expert and uh, Colin Campbell the golfing man, Doug was doing the commercials um, and it was one of those sorts of programs. So it ran its 13 weeks and that was what the, that's what the customer wanted. Westinghouse was very pleased with it. And then uh, we decided that we'd be able to run on Sunday. And of course, in those days, broadcasting sport on a Sunday was a fairly touchy subject. Touchy subject. I think it went to air firstly at one o'clock, Doug, was it? Yeah, one o'clock for half an hour. And uh, Westinghouse was so pleased with the program that they, uh, uh, they decided to continue with it. It was Westinghouse World of Sport initially on the Sunday, then it gradually extended to an hour, and the old broadcast control board were a bit nervous. Then we got it back to half past 12, and then got it back to 12 o'clock, and so it happened. Westinghouse went out of it, but their major retailer um, in Melbourne, uh, their distributor, uh, was Veals in those days. Right. And uh, Veals were more than happy to take it over and became Veals World of Sport. And so it just went on and on and on, and so it happened, and all those wonderful episodes continued. It certainly did. Hmm. Tell me why, and whose decision was it, to drop rehearsals? I don't think we ever had any. Well, <laughs> my... <laughs> perhaps some people called them rehearsals. Oh, we had a walkthrough here in the morning. And depending on how you felt, you know, how long, how long the walkthrough was. It's good to see, uh, I saw Joe Benson uh, a little while ago. Joe was the original film uh, editor, the head of the film department here before videotape. And many a, many a morning, Joe and I would be up there at five o'clock in the morning trying to find out uh, what, what this film was and what that film was. You made the best cup of tea known, known in, in the building, Joe, at five o'clock on a Sunday morning. Tea or black coffee? Oh, no, it was tea. He was a very good tea man, uh, Joe. And, of course, he had some anxious moments. Neil Roberts would forget to bring the film back from Sydney and Skeeter Coughlin would go out and do a grand final uh, series of interviews and next morning you weren't too sure what, what was on the film at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's one piece of film up there somewhere in the archives. Uh, I think... <laughs> I think it's taken 35 seconds for Skeeter to say magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> but they were great times. Yes, they certainly were, Ron. Well, let's. Uh...